June 14th. We're calling the meeting to order. It's 6.02. Um, Ellen will be joining us. <laughs> Preliminary action, do I have any additions to the agenda? I have one. Oh. I would like to recognize you, Stephanie. Oh. <laughs> yes, I would. For your six years of service to our school district as a board member and for your last year as president of the board and for my last three and a half months. I appreciate well, so very Thank very you much. so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So nice. <laughs> Do we get to approve that? <laughs> yeah. All in favor? All in favor? Yeah, get it in there. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Second. Um, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the May 15th regular meeting and special meetings of May 21st and June 6th. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, I'm going to call uh, this, uh, turn actually turn this over to Sally Campbell, who's going to MC our um, Emerald Foundation um, presentations. And I think the board's going to move to the front row for that. And I'll sure. just take over. That's great. Okay. Um, we'll try to uh, move quickly through these presentations, but um, every year in June, as part of receiving a grant or a scholarship, um, people are asked to come and share what their experiences were uh, with the funds that they received, what they did with those funds, uh, how it impacted students who were their student, how it impacted their, them in particular. So um, we're going to start off with uh, Cody Watkins, Molly Stahl, and Shelby Curtis. We're going to discuss their experience um, on this year's Euro European trip. Mom, Dad. And uh, I just asked you this, so everybody can hear you, unless there's a microphone. Yeah, right. so, yeah, if you mics, need a microphone, you can use it. I just want to go stand right down. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, I'm pretty vocal, so I can speak pretty loudly for myself. This spring break, I was able to have the opportunity to ride, fly, and be able to travel around, travel around the world. There's something myself as a teenager can say, not how many have done. Thanks to the opportunity this foundation has granted for me, from Spain, Italy, and even France, those hot spots in Europe were amazing locations where I was able to have traveled to. I knew for sure Barcelona was going to be by far my favorite location to visit, being a Spanish student, of course. But it quickly changed for myself. Venice, Italy was by far the most beautiful place I have vis ever visited in my entire life. The gondola rides, beautiful sunsets, and even my roommates were having a heck of a time in the nights. I could ever, um, for different reasons, many of which were having the opportunity to have a different religion and a different culture through the Rotary and even um, the conversation between individuals through my Spanish experience. I was able to see the beautiful cathedrals in Barcelona and in France. And even remember visiting and go to paintings and be a witness to them in France. I want to say personally thank you for this opportunity to travel outside of my small town and be able to experience a huge city in various different countries. I was really able to bond with my roommates and fellow classmates through this trip than I was able to before. It was a great way to end my senior year. I want to thank you. I was able to experience 
something that I hadn't ever been able to do before. I personally, the furthest I've gone was for Florida for to go to Disney with my family. So being able to travel the world for the first time was a completely new experience that I wouldn't have been, been able to get otherwise without the support. Um, it also allowed me to create lots of new memories. Um, specifically, the first time having four blisters at once. <laughs> <laughs> one on the right foot, three on the other one. <laughs> and on the pads. So, uh, so through through the pain that I suffered, <laughs> I didn't let that spoil the experience for me. It was just so amazing that I knew I needed to stay positive through the entire experience and make sure that I made the most of it all. So I'm very appreciative to the Emerald Foundation for letting me experience it. Um, I'm just going to have Molly Stahl stand here and talk uh, quickly about her other scholarships she received um, to attend the Hobie uh, Leadership Program. The Hugh O'Brien Group Leadership Seminar opened me up to the potential that I possess. With amazing speeches by influential people and a welcoming and accepting environment, it's the perfect base for ideas and reflection. From Hobie, I was inspired. I came up with an idea for a service project that I plan on carrying out this summer. And without Hobie, I would either have come up with nor have the motivation to accomplish the project. And without the help of the Emerald Foundation, I wouldn't have even been able to go to Hope. So next up is Bill Dowsland, who's going to talk about the uh, Summer Middle School Academy. I think we've done this uh, uh, grant for, we provide this grant for three summers, isn't it? Yeah. So four. 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 Four summers. Got it. Did you get blisters? <laughs> no blisters. <laughs> Before I turn it over to Mrs. Bordway and Mrs. Cunningham to talk about the Middle School Summer Academy, I would just like to extend a huge thank you to the Emerald Foundation. Through, if you look at our grant recipients, nearly $60,000 was awarded to enhance programs, not only academically, but social, emotionally, and culturally. And to be able to do that and enhance what we already have is amazing. So a huge thank you to the Emerald Foundation Board of Directors, all the donors, please extend our thank you. Uh, and Jamie and Monica will now talk about our middle school summer camp. <laughs> yeah, we'll do Huh? Okay. I know, but I was. Okay. Turn it on. There you go. And the sound is plugged in here? Um, it's got sound. You could point the mic at it. I don't know if it's got sound. Okay. Okay, sure. Come here, come here. There's so many animals. Academy, uh, we decided that we would take more of a project-based um, approach and so we posed the question to students that what was something that they really wanted to know about Hamilton? At first they were kind of like, huh? Um, but through some brainstorming and um, some collaboration, um, they came up with several topics, and I'll show you that in a second, um, of things that piqued their interest about Hamilton that they always wanted to know but maybe never really had the opportunity to um, know more about them. So from there, they formed interest groups, and so they created a, a game plan um, to get started. So here's some of the things that the kids came up with. They wanted to know more about um, the fish in Taylor Lake, 
Um, and we had some gentlemen that wondered, why do these fish have spots? Um, is Taylor Lake really a lake? We learned a lot about that. Um, the history of the Colgate mascot, um, why the number 13 is significant in Colgate's history, and of course the chocolate train wreck. So when you're thinking about the big ideas that we wanted to cover, one of the biggest challenges I think is that we have several um, grade levels abilities um, amongst two teachers. So we wanted to know or what we could do to reach all kids um, with skills that they would use in all classes. And so research um, obviously popped up as something that you know they're using in every class. So we started by thinking who in the community could help us. Um, and through research of Colgate's website, um, the library, we came up with Professor Hall, which turned out to be an amazing resource at Colgate, um, Mrs. Prindle, and the Hamilton Public Library, and even had a group of boys reach out to um, the DEC. Okay, so after we've gotten a week into this, which this is actually really important because um, it, this is what we wanted to achieve. We really wanted not the typical, I'm gonna come to summer school, do some math, um, read, do some comprehension. We it, it, we kind of all did a 360 when we heard, God, we actually wanted to come here today. <laughs> so right then and there, we knew we were on the right track. Um, and so off we went, and that was one of, I think, one of the most effective things that we did is we got the kids off campus. And so we started um, off by going to the library, learned some of the resources that the library had. Um, and so this was the best day ever, was going to the Colgate archives, and we kind of stumbled upon this and it worked out really well and the kids um, and there's some pictures coming up later um, later on the slideshow but it was really official we had to sit down with the white gloves and they could only do certain things and you know there was waiver yeah waiver there's protocol it was very cool um, and of course we had a group of very happy kids who got to actually go fishing <laughs> Um, so aside from all the fun, we were thinking about what is it that we really wanted to cover. So research, 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 um, how to use reliable sources, organized note taking, um, how to write and take that information into an um, informational essay. Um, you'd be surprised how many kids don't know how to really write a professional email, you know, that doesn't sound like... Um, texting. Yeah, texting talk. Um, thank you notes, another kind of lost talent. Um, then, of course, with the um, actual presentation came a model. Um, yes, there's a, an, a life-size model of the Colgate Raider. <laughs> um, and then, of course, our last day was really, really fun. And parents and some of the community members that helped us um, put all the projects together came for a final presentation. Um, and, of course, we read a really awesome book, Orbiting Jupiter. And this was, kids could not put it down, so if you're looking for a good book, um, yeah, so these pictures kind of say it all themselves. So we have a couple of students, that, um, those were the gentlemen who decided that they wanted to figure out what the spots were um, on the fish at Colgate Lake, and at Taylor Lake. And I didn't even know that you could, I mean, there's so much we learned, but you have to put the fish back, how the fish get there, um, how it even started out. There's so much history you drive by and you don't even realize that it really was just a swamp. Um, and so the middle picture is in the archives, and you can see um, those students were wondering what the Colgate Raider used to look like, and that's an actual figurine that came um, that the archives had. And so, of course, Mr. Dalzin posing as the Raider. <laughs> um, again, another picture at the archives, very official, very quiet, white gloves, folders of um, different parts of Taylor Lake. Um, oh, and so um, Andrea had the kitchen kitchen helped us um, use some recipes and we, uh, we made some, I think they were banana nut muffins or something. Um, blueberry, yeah, um, for our guests. So that was fun. We had a day of cooking. Um, yes, and while we were um, researching at Colgate, some of the girls went in and worked in the cafe. That was a different vibe in the classroom. There were the spots, though, so the, the guys actually caught some fish and those were the spots that they were researching. Um, we have a video here, short presentation, so hopefully this video plays. Yeah, it's this. Turn it all the way up. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> That's all right. That's it. That's it. So we just brought a couple. 
look at like, like um, so this was the boys model. So it was like a fun interactive way. They had a really amazing video to go along with it, but it has since been lost and <laughs> deleted and taken off of YouTube and all that. But it was really amazing. Um, and then on here they just had this interactive, there was a question and you had to guess which fish was underneath, and then the same thing with the girls with Taylor Lake. They had no cards presented for their, their presentation. Um, we had two girls that did a really adorable um, remake and model of the train, and so it was just overall, it was a really great summer. I mean, summer school is always great, but for this year, doing something different, hands-on, project-based, it was really amazing. And I think this was one of our highest attendance years as well with getting the kids out and doing different things and letting them kind of be in charge a little bit. So we really appreciate you funding this for us. It was really a great summer. So thank, thank you. you so much. Um, Bill's going to talk about the Home and Careers course for Kathy mm -hmm. Boyd. Make it tonight. So Kathy sent a little narrative that I'd like to read to you. I'd like to thank the Emerald Foundation for the grant money the school received. This grant was used to assist in putting together supplies and equipment needed to create a cooking class for our eighth grade students. With the money gifted by the Emerald Foundation, we were able to purchase two ovens and stoves, one refrigerator, and cooking equipment for three cooking stations, electric mixers, mixing bowls, measuring cups, knives, etc. Some of the skills the students were able to focus on were knife skills, cutting, chopping, dicing, boiling water to cook potatoes and pasta, measuring with accuracy, peeling, using the stove and oven safely. The students who came through the family and consumer science class were able to learn new skills by actually preparing, planning, and cooking foods in the class. The curriculum was designed to have our eighth grade students create food that used basic kitchen skills, but also allowed them to use some creative skills to go off recipe to see what they could create. The difference between cooking baking soda versus baking powder, safe handling of raw meat, cracking eggs, quick breads versus the use of yeast, reading and comprehending labels. Through your generous grant, not only were the students in facts class able to work in the kitchen, other teachers were able to utilize the kitchen equipment during the first year. Johanna Bosser brought her class in to create burgers. Vicki Motes brought one of her classes in to work on the safe handling of cooking meat. Jen Briggs' class was able to use the ovens to cook bread the students in her class made. I posted many pictures throughout the year on the Hamilton Central School's Facebook page so the public could see what a worthwhile class FACTS currently is for our students. Thank you so much for your generous contribution. We extend our gratitude for your continued support of programs at HCS. Funding your grant makes the growth of our programs possible. Thank you, Mrs. Roy. Next up is uh, Lori Huntington and Meg Rose talking about the um, guided reading library. Chris, I'll try and use this. You want me to just try and use this? I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> oh, and Bridget. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <coughs> I go by Google. Oh, yeah. So I'll start. Um, we're really grateful to the Hamilton Emerald Foundation for um, helping us to purchase this guided reading library. Um, I have a lot of books, but a lot of the books that I have, and I know that Lori has, are, have really been used for many, many years. They're not necessarily developmentally appropriate, and they don't always work um, well for the lessons that we need to teach the young children. So having this uh, new library was really, really beneficial. And this is the first time we've used Google Slides. So. So there are some of our children using the books. So we wanted to just explain a little bit about what guided reading is, first of all. Um, it's small group reading instruction, and the groups are usually um, based around children who are working on a similar developmental level in their literacy. Um, sometimes it can also be skill-based, like if, if you're trying to teach a particular skill to children. Um, you can also, that's all right, 
Um, you can also use it when you're trying to advance them to the next <coughs> reading level if they're a B and you want them to get to a C. You need to challenge them and have them reading those C books. Um, so that group allows, the small group allows us to challenge and to support the children. Oops. Hold on. Really, I'm not used to it. All right, here we go. Stop. I know, but I can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> this is an example of part of the guided reading library collection. Um, it consists of 100 titles, and they're all leveled readers. And each title has six copies for small group instruction. And the collection has A through G, and the kindergarten typical levels are A through D. And we have both fiction and nonfiction books um, that are incredible. And so I passed out to you what the, some samples of what the books look like as well as what a typical guided reading lesson would look like. Each book comes with its um, own, I'll say, teacher's guide. Um, and there are certain point uh, parts to the lesson. For example, the first thing you do is introduce the text. And again, you'd have to know your students, know their background knowledge, but you would have a conversation with them to get them ready to read. Then you actually read the text. And so while they're reading, you're paying attention and listening and noticing what they're doing, what they're not doing. Then um, after you've read the text, then you would have a discussion and revisit the text. Um, you know, you would do thinking within the text, thinking beyond the text, thinking about the text. Um, next would be a teaching point. At the kindergarten level, it might be um, really looking closely at the picture to use the picture to help you figure out a word, or looking very closely at the first letter of the word and looking at the picture and saying, oh, there's a picture of a cat there, and cat, it starts with a C, 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 yep, oh, it's a cat. It's, um, and they're so excited because this is all a brand new thing for them. Um, there, it also includes phonics work and word work, Lots of manipulatives. You'll notice the little um, the letters, the magnetic letters, and then another part to extend the lesson, if you would like, is writing about reading, and that's an optional part. And at the beginning of kindergarten, you might not do it as much as you might do at the end of kindergarten. And there's just some more examples of what it looks like. Uh, Zach Darrow uh, to talk about the 360 classroom he created for the middle school. I don't think I need a microphone. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> no. Um, so, thank you to the Animal Foundation. Um, with the money that they gave me with my grant, I was able to purchase four brand new smartphones. Um, and through some trials and tribulations, they're all installed. Um, I've worked really closely with Chris Rogers over the past few months, and we are really close to having everything configured the way we want. Uh, there's been some major troubleshooting with getting them to work in the style that we want to for the 360 math classroom, but by the time fall hits, um, what we're gonna be able to do is get the middle schoolers on their feet. Uh, so instead of having them sit in rows and stare at me for 50 minutes at a time, uh, I really want to cut down on the amount of lecture that I do in the middle school classroom. Um, short, quick, guided lectures, 10 to 15 minutes tops, and then get them on their feet in cooperative learning groups so that they can use different modalities other than just oral and, and writing down notes to try to learn. Um, so my hope is that in getting them up and working, I can float around the room and answer questions and just guide them in their learning. And that way, there's a little bit more ownership in the learning process on a student. Um, and I can see as they work through their problems on four smart boards from wherever I'm standing, I can make quick fixes as they work independently or in cooperative learning groups. Right. So they're not just maybe getting this as Mr. Punzo works on his assignment at his desk, and I don't see it because there's 20 students in the room. When they're doing it on a whiteboard, it's there for everyone to see. Um, so my hope is that we can really encourage the students to take a little more ownership on learning in the math classroom. Because not everybody likes math. Um, and they're the first people to say when they walk in the room in September, I don't like math, it's too hard. Um, and as much as I love being the center of attention in my classroom, this will allow them to, to really flourish, we believe. Um, and I really want to get as much data as I can on it as I progress through the year and try to compare to some of my past classes and, and see what it looks like. Uh, because nobody's really been doing it. 
Uh, there's one teacher at BBS that does it to an extent, but we are really one of the first districts that's going to be piloting this program. Uh, and I'm really excited, and I couldn't do it without your help, so thank you very much. Um, we have a few students who attended the FFA con uh, conference. Oh, there you are. <coughs> this is Rowe and Michaela Jones. to go on um, a college fair and we can go see different career expos as well. Um, some examples of tours we went on is on the way to Indianapolis, we stopped um, near Ohio to a canine unit training facility. So we got to see um, dogs of all ages, both from puppies to um, just about a year old, um, in the process of being trained um, to be specialized canine unit um, dogs. Um, whether it was sniffing for bombs or sniffing for drugs or weapons, um, it was very interesting and eye-opening to see the different processes that they had to go through. We also stopped at the Connor Perry Museum once we were in Indianapolis, and it was similar to the Farmer's Museum that we have in Cooperstown, but um, everyone there is constantly acting as if they were in time. They never break character, and it was very interesting to see something like the Farmer's Museum but on a larger scale. We also got to hear from keynote speaker uh, Layla Ali. She talked about um, a life of selfless service and how to um, stay motivated throughout the year because um, sometimes service can burn you out and um, just gave some very helpful tips on how to stay motivated throughout the year. We were also there to um, support Lindsay Palmer, a Hamilton FFA alumni, while she got awarded the American FFA degree, which is the absolute highest honorary degree that you can receive in the FFA. Um, only 1% of members receive it, so we were really grateful to be able to be there to support her while she received that. Uh, we also went to a college fair and a career expo while in Indianapolis. The college fair, we get to see different agricultural class, uh, colleges throughout the entire nation. Um, each year in Hamilton, our uh, juniors go to a college fair in OCC. We can see a bunch of different colleges across the state, but in Indianapolis, we get to see a, different, a bunch of different ag colleges and the different courses that they allow students to take um, all across the nation, from California to New York to Florida and everything else. We also get to see a career expo where we see a bunch of different ag careers, uh, from being a teacher to working in a greenhouse, working in the forest. We can see everything they do with hands-on demonstrations by specific personnel from companies or specific um, corporations. We also got to go to the FFA store and buy memorabilia and different FFA items to remember our national trip this year. We also got to go on fun events, like we went to a Rascal Blast concert, and we went to play laser tag with our officer team and the rest of the students that went on our trip. And we also went to a rodeo for the second year in a row, and we got to hang out with a bunch of different cool animals and clowns as well. <laughs> Um, so, on behalf of both of us, 
we would like to say thank you to the Hamilton Emerald Foundation for allowing us to attend this trip. It was a great bonding experience for every member that went. Um, it was amazing to be able to support others in their experience, like Lindsay when she got her American degree, and we also made um, a lot of memories as well, and the experience was amazing. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Johanna Mosser, who, who is such a wonderful mentor to these students. Just kidding. <laughs> so, hi, my name is Johanna Mosser. I'm the ag teacher here at Hamilton. And these animals, um, and down here in the front and our horse in the back are exactly what our fiber sack animals are. So a little bit about fiber sack animals. I learned about them from, I attended a DuPont training a couple of years ago and met a lot of people from across the country and I was following another um, ag teacher's Facebook page that she posts a lot of cool stuff that she does and she teaches in another uh, state in a BOCES type setting in animal science class and she was posting all this awesome stuff about with, uh, with the horse. And I was like, what is that? And so we wrote back and forth, and she's like, they're fiber stock animals. So fiberstock.com literally makes <laughs> animals, um, lots of animals. We have a lot of them here. And they're made out of fiberglass. They look heavy, but they're not. Um, and they have all, a lot of different kinds of animals, animals in different poses, you know, horses, um, you know, stallions, and uh, everything in between. And so I thought, this is awesome because we can really take our hands-on learning and inquiry-based learning that I try to, to approach our classes with to a new level. So some of the things that we've, we've done with them, not limited to, I'm going to let the girls talk about a couple of the projects because they're in my pre-vet science class. But um, so you can do easy animal handling. I bring a lot of animals into the classroom, but they're only there for the day, obviously, or maybe like a cell or a period or half of a day. So this can extend that learning. So how do I put a halter on a horse? Where are the flight zones? Where are my safety zones when I'm working with a cat and a dog in a small uh, animal hospital? How do I wrap a horse's leg? What if my dog gets hit and I need to get my dog to the, to the um, animal hospital? How do I put a makeshift muzzle on my dog? How do I stop the wound from bleeding so I can get it to the vet so my animal is okay? Huh. And everything in between, that's just the outside stuff. The, some of the you know, other things we've done in our pre-vet science class, I'm going to let these guys kind of jump in and talk about a couple of the projects that we did in pre-vet this year. Um, so on each animal, as you can see, there are different um, body systems on it. This one is the skeletal system. That was general anatomy. These are uh, knee cuts. You can see on the back, the horse has several different, um, like the circulatory system, respiratory, um, reproductive, excretory. Um, and being able to have these animals to paint on both allowed us to um, be hands-on with the animals and um, be able to understand how everything in the, in the body works um, together. Instead of just one system at a time, we painted them all on and it was kind of interesting to see how everything overlaps. It was interesting to see differences between um, a cow's stomach and a goat's stomach and a dog's stomach. and. Um, the relative space that each system takes up. Um, along with painting, we had to do research um, on each system that we created, including all the systems on our horse and our cow, which is not like that's not with us right now. Um, we had to research the exact size and where exactly in the body the, each system went. And I think that helps a lot with noticing the difference between a human body and an animal because our heart is much smaller than a cow's heart or a pig's heart. And seeing the different sizes and making sure that everything is correct and having the correct measurements um, really shows us how our bodies are different than animal bodies and how exactly inside of an animal their body would look like if you were to um, do a dissection or something on them. The best part about these animals, I think uh, my mechanics students put them on wheels, you know, so they were rollable, they could come like that. Um, and obviously all the kids, of course, had to name the animals and then the mechanics obviously routed signs for them. But the best part about them is when we want to do something different, we just paint over them again. And you just keep reusing them. It's not like, you know, to, you know next year our classes will paint over them and we'll, you can do whatever you want with them and just keep that process going. I don't know, someone asked me, like, well, how, how long? I don't, I'm not really sure. Forever. Um, until paint 
um, you know, to soak thick at them. Uh, this year they'll be um, heading to our Brook, uh, Madison County Fair, to the Brookfield Fair to be displayed in the youth uh, building there, and then they'll be on display at the New York State Fair in the FFA building this summer. So if you guys are traveling to either of those fairs, please stop by and, and see them, because we'll have them on exhibit up there um, through the, our Hamilton FFA and that classes. Um, but we really want to thank you for the, the donation, because it's just an awesome extension of our, our learning, and we appreciate your support. Next up is uh, Johanna talking again about the enrichment fund, <laughs> uh, along with um, Victoria. <laughs> oh, sorry. More than one. Yeah, kind of. So when I, when I ordered the cat, like everything is true to size and functional, and then the cat gets here, <laughs> so we're like, that is not <laughs> like a mom lion cat. In the picture, it does not look like that. So that's a kind of our joke is that cat's kind of like not necessarily true to any house cats we have around. Maybe in Illinois, where Piperstock.com is. I'm not sure. for students in grades two through five that didn't have opportunities such as sports or other after-school programs, musical lessons. They just need something else to do after school that's fun, exciting, and still educational. So we decided to have different sessions that are supervised by both of us, but we had different teachers teach the sessions. So they decided what the, something that they were interested in that they wanted to share with students. And we have one um, that's gonna talk a little bit later, Ms. Kowalski. And each enrichment bunch group ran from, so second and third graders, and fourth and fifth, we had four sessions, so one hour every day uh, after school. They were provided a healthy snack at the start, and then we started the enrichment bunch right away. So student participation, um, second and third grade, we had 34 students, so it was a big, big group. <laughs> and then fourth and fifth grade, we had 15 students. A little, a little more manageable. So some of the different workshops. So, uh, we just want to focus on, kind of, we had eight awesome workshops provided by our HCS faculty and staff, which is really fun, but we just picked out a couple. Um, this is most of the workshop on tie-dyeing, but obviously we did an educational twist on all of them, so we talked about um, you know, non-polar and polar molecules and how they all work together in creating tie-dye, um, Sharpie tie-dye shirts, so the kids really liked this one. Uh, which was really fun for them. So they had, um, they were down the agro making their tie-dye shirts. And then the second one we brought up was, oh, Mrs. Stanstreet. So Mrs. Stanstreet showed students how, uh, the importance of gardening, and then students got to choose from three different garden choices. They got to make a salsa garden, a salad garden, or a pickling garden. So I grew up stuff with our agri-science students in the greenhouse, and then students got to transplant those into um, large garden pots to be able to take home. And we talked about transplanting and growing our food and where our food comes from, the seed to table concept. And then hopefully when they got home, they transplanted them, and then they will now be able to make all of those, you know, their salad, their pickles, or their salsa, hopefully by the end of the summer. And uh, Mrs. Pope did 
Um, she's really into bees. She's a beekeeper. So one thing about doing this enrichment bunch, it's neat to <coughs> learn about our own faculty and staff that we all work together every day. I, I had no idea that she was a beekeeper. And so she did a, a big pollination unit just about how important bees are to our environment and without bees, where we would be and what, what they do for us. And they made bee gardens. So um, because it's really important that the bees need healthy wa drinking water too. So they got to uh, color or paint rocks, obviously, to resemble the bees and made little rock bee gardens. So the kids like that one. And today, actually, just a sh few short hours ago, <laughs> yeah. Mrs. Kowalski did. Yeah, so um, when Johanna and Victoria asked me to do this, I thought it said enrichment brunch on the email side. So <laughs> 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 like, sign me up. I did a, yeah. <laughs> He goes, sign me up. I go, well, what are you going to do? And he's like, do you? I was like, yeah, in this enrichment bunch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care. Yeah. Uh, so, so, anyway, um, so um, Johanna and I talk a lot about how to combine art and agriculture because there's so many like overlapping projects that we could do together. And so I thought we could, you know, introduce like an ag art project through the enrichment bunch. So, not brunch. Um, so I had these mosaic tiles left from Barb House when she did this giant mosaic um, outside my room. And um, I was just, I've been thinking about ways to use them in my class, but it takes funding because I need to buy the glue and I have to buy the tile. So this was a really nice opportunity to be able to use the funding from um, the Emerald Foundation. So I bought tiles and these are examples. We talked about creating patterns. Um, so these will be like little garden mosaics that um, second and third graders made today. So we practiced, you know, making patterns starting from the center and it's so amazing how different the kids, like third grade, yeah. third grade and second grade, I love them so much. Um, so it was really fun to work with two of my colleagues who I don't get to see all the time and it was fun to work with the kids in a different setting as well. So yeah. yes, thank you. So thank you very much for that funding, we appreciate it. Uh, and his uh, teachers are going to talk about the Orton Gillingham training that they received. Uh, I guess, Kevin, you're not talking. I got it. Um, they got it. They got we, it. I, I, I'll just open it by saying that uh, we identified this year a real need in our three-year <coughs> RTI's uh, reading instruction. So we um, wanted to get going as quickly as possible on it. Yeah, we didn't. Um, we didn't have the funding for it, so we we had we had some funding for it. So we looked through Emerald and the local donors to, to help fund it, so we can make it happen this year and start the house right away. So, thank you. I'm Danielle Hayden. I'm a special ed teacher here in the elementary. Nicole Kalkowski, special ed teacher in the elementary. So we are super fortunate um, to be able to go to. Uh, Georgia and we had a training for Orton Gillingham. It's a very systematic uh, and routine approach to help all of our readers um, who might be struggling that need a little bit more intervention uh, because when we start thinking about reading and writing they're all connected. It's the decoding, it's the encoding and you start with one single sound in isolation and how to build that up and you blend it into words and then you're manipulating the words, you change the sound in it, all the way up to being able to write sentences and read sentences. It's very systematic. Um, we went through the entire process on spelling rules. That is one of our hot topics here is spelling rules and how to bring that into our writing. Um, so we learned about different things like when do you use a C or a K? Well, you'll use, you know, when you have C followed by, you know, combination of E and I become soft. So that's when we start using the head. Um, so we've had a lot of really great tips and tricks and it's very multi-sensory. So we learned how to build movement into all of our reading and writing activities. And um, then we also went through the whole process and how to make our students more independent. And we went through editing and we had a really great um, strategy that they gave us called COPS, uh, where you can imagine like a little stop sign and C for capitals and O organizing your writing. Uh, P for punctuation and S for spelling. So it brings them through the entire reading and writing process to help our students that might be struggling and need some more intervention. Mm -hmm. um, and moving forward, we actually, as soon as we got back, we went right to Kevin and have ordered our supplies. Um, they gave us amazing resources. We have a great teacher manual, but a lot of different books that have great resources in them. But because it's multi-sensory, we need to order some different sand kits. There's um, like a knitting pen that you use to trace over the 
the letters to help that sensory process. So we have that all ordered and we're going to start using Orton Gillingham this summer and the summer program and plan to use it next year and some AIS groups to help students with dyslexia or just our low um, reading need kids. So it was very, it was amazing. It was 8 o'clock in the morning to 3.30 and I tell you right now that trainer, she stuck to a schedule and we, it felt like a college course <laughs> jammed into a week. So we were very fortunate. It was amazing and the tricks that she showed us with the different letters and rules because some kids will sometimes be like, there's so many rule breakers. Well, why is a word like that? And honestly, most teachers, like everyone in that room was like, it blew our mind. We're just like, because it is what it is. Just, that's English. They break rules. She told us about their origin for so many different words, why in certain ways. So it was fascinating, just as, especially an upper elementary teacher, just the, what was that word she used? That, it, there's a terminology for the study of words. Oh, morphology. Morphology, there we go. <laughs> so it was just, it was amazing, and I'm really excited to get to help our students. That's great. So thank you so much. Thank you for your time. One more thing is these ladies came to me and asked to go this year. We didn't have a lot of time to do it. They went on their um, their spring vacation. So while most of us were home during vacation, they went and, and they had this amazing opportunity. So I wanted to thank you. The, uh, the group of kids who got to experience the Shakespeare program at the Palace Theater. If my room wasn't so full of other stuff, I'd <laughs> So we had kind of a last minute opportunity. Uh, thank you so much for the speed with which you were able to do that because the opportunity came to go see Shakespeare. <laughs> yes, some of us, I'm a nerd. <laughs> so my Shakespeare nerd came out and said, oh, we have to do this, I need to take some kids. Harry Jarko helped us with the first connection with the palace and then said, maybe the Emerald Foundation and we pushed it through and it was such a great experience. There were two parts to it. They got to see the, the play that evening, which was very interesting. It wasn't your usual dressed up Renaissance clothing. It was a very different kind of interpretation that was very interesting, I thought anyway. There was food involved, they threw things. <laughs> <laughs> things that you don't normally get to see. They're literally, <laughs> Dr. Larson was there. They threw food. They threw food. Yes, it, it was, was very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier in the day, I got to take students to meet the members of the troupe and have a stage combat class. This is why Molly's here. She's going to talk about that. Stage combat is not just throwing a fist and hoping for the best. And that's what a lot of the things that we learned was early ways to choreograph stage combat. So we get there and it's adults that you don't know. It's actors who, they're young, but and they have so much energy and you're just so shocked. Because it's morning. We went there in the morning. <laughs> and you're Did you think it was brunch too? That was <laughs> and we were told that stage fighting is not punching. You don't hit, which we kind of already knew, but you have to know what you're doing. It's choreography. So they taught us a basic choreography and then handed out scripts to put it to. They gave us, almost all of us got scenes from a shape, different shapes we play, and then one group got uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> My other nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool to be able to see it and then to put it to words. You kind of learned it away from any actual like theater application and just learned it as the choreography itself. And later that night at the show, like Ms. Moore said, it was a very weird production of Midsummer Night's Dream. And it was the first production of the show I had ever seen with only six actors, and every single prop was food. So it was very, very interesting.
interesting and it was something I'm very, very glad I got to see. So thank you very much for allowing us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. sickly germs at UI would just uh, show you guys that way. So um, I have yet to email Sally, but I um, would love to present again at the end of the year next year um, with what I did with DDP uh, laptop cart, the Chromebook cart. I just got it. Um, Chris and the tech department just set it up. So thank you very much for that. Um, so the, what I showed you in the Adobe Spark presentation is just some of the software that I want to use going into next year. I'm still working out um, what order I want to use it, the projects that I want to do, um, but the units of study are there. Um, and so I'm really excited to just have the opportunity to, I think, reinvigorate HCS with this course that, from my understanding, we had 10-ish years ago, was that right? Yeah. Maybe more? Yeah. Um, and so I'm really just happy to be able to bring it back into the course offerings and see what we can do with it um, and work pretty close with Chris on some of the 3D printing stuff. And, and make miracles happen. So thank you very much to Emerald Foundation. I got the email that my grant was accepted and I was kind of dancing on the front porch a little bit at home. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I was going to get it. So thank you very much. I'm really excited to see what next year has in store. So. We're excited for you too. Um, and Chris, you're going to finish this off tonight? There's no audio. Bring it on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can get back. She's working on that too. So I'll, I'll never forget that it was, I think, maybe my second or my, my third week here. And I was, I was 
still a little nervous being, uh, being new. And I was attending a forum which we have every day in the auditorium and somebody was giving a presentation and um, so there was some snafu, somebody was trying to plug the computer in and it wasn't working and everybody just sort of turned to look at me and it's like pleading <laughs> away. I just I run down to the auditorium and our, down to where the, uh, the hookups were and tried to make it work the best I could. And uh, from that point forward, I thought, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Um, so the projector that's currently in the auditorium is around 12 years old. Um, the, um, the video hookup that connects to the projector in the auditorium is it's only got one, it's a VGA, um, which is pretty low resolution. You know, you guys have got much better pictures in your houses with your, um, with your high definition television sets. Um, so the Emerald Foundation's uh, wonderful grant is gonna allow us to um, upgrade that projector to um, a brand new laser projector, which doesn't use a bulb and will never require a bulb to be um, purchased again. Um, it will also be, It'll also be capable of going up to uh, 4K resolution, so it's kind of future-proof. Um, the connections will be much, much easier so that if we have presenters that come in, or even just everyday form, I think form is something that's really, really unique we have here. Um, it will just be much, uh, much easier to use. And I noticed that the auditorium gets used a ton here. I mean, I've only been here since December, but there have been talent shows and concerts and you know, form every day, so many things. Um, so I think, you know, we'll be able to show movies in there um, and we won't have to squint. <laughs> it's just sort of like 3D without the glasses. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. I think it will be, um, be a great investment in use for your video. Thanks. Good. So we just want to thank the Board of Education for letting us um, crash a meeting and we, we feel it's the best way to get as many people to hear uh, what wonderful things that faculty and students do with their, their grant funds. So um, if you're not a donor, consider being a donor. And if you're not a recipient, uh, apply for money. So we want to see lots more interesting uh, programs and um, projects next year. So thank you. Thank you. So we're on to item 2.5. This is um, a capital project presentation by King and King. So I'm going to turn over to you. Sure, I'm going to start if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy to introduce Paul Johnston and Jim King from King and King Architects out of Syracuse, New York. Uh, two gentlemen in a firm that are very familiar with our building. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to them to go over some things, but really I'm here to introduce. Uh, you know, a, a new initiative and a concept that I think is, is sort of overdue here at Hamilton. Um, we're due for some, <laughs> some major capital improvements here to our building. Uh, the last capital project that was conducted here, the, the vote was in 2006, work was completed in 2008. Um, over the next course of many years, for various reasons, um, there weren't any more major um, capital projects done here. In 2010 and in 2015, all districts in New York State, including Hampton, we have to conduct what's known as a building condition survey. It's a mechanism for New York State to be informed on what they can expect school districts to be doing in, in the next five year period so they can project out for building aid. Um, Paul and Jim, King and King have done our building condition surveys for us. It's a really, a, it's a valuable tool for us to assess our needs. Um, we've had multiple meetings in the last six months or so here at the district. Uh, we've relied heavily on, on Craig Schick, our director of facilities. He's been here 30 years. Uh, so he's been through projects. He knows this building better than anybody. Um, but these two gentlemen, after Craig, know the building better than anybody else. So um, tonight, uh, we're using tonight you know, at this board meeting with this audience to introduce the concept of, of a capital project. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Paul and Jim King King for further information. Thank you. Uh, I'll start, first of all, um, unbelievable programs. Uh, 
Ryan, the uh, auditorium projector we put in in 2006. Uh, so with that one VGA cable was high tech. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of <laughs> I remember Maybe it was two thousand. Probably it was designed in 2006. Yeah. We didn't somewhere seven or eight. Right? Yeah. Uh, the other Ryan, wherever the other Ryan was, uh, the SketchUp program. Yeah. If you need yeah. to do uh, a combination SketchUp and career exploration, last month we were up at Central Square and taught those kids at the high school level sketch up the way we use it, showed them what we do with sketch up. So we'd be glad to Does it even lecture? Yes. We had four people, I'm gonna say yeah. uh, around younger than most of the yeah. people in this room <laughs> teaching uh, nine to twelve graders at Central Square sketch up and uh, just, and it showed some examples of the stuff that we do with SketchUp because we use it not every day, but we use it as a, as a beginning to our design process uh, because it's pretty intuitive and it's pretty quick. So I'll give you my card when I leave and we're looking forward to helping out there. Thank you very much. All the other programs I've heard about and, I, and I, we have observed Phil, yeah, um, Phil. We took some pictures, <laughs> these names are perfect because they are some of our folks that work with <laughs> Those baby hanging off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Matt and uh, Pete, for inviting us. We're going to make this short. Um, after listening to the last whatever it's been, half hour, 45 minutes, in order to run the kind of awesome programs that I just heard about, obviously, need some facilities. And the facilities, like the programs, need to continue to be kept up uh, with whatever the current technology is or current equipment. And Paul and I, with the help of Craig and our engineers, uh, have had a chance to start to walk the facilities again after doing the Paul was instrumental with the 2015 building condition survey, which is now already three years old. And we're heading in a year or two, two we'll be doing the 20 years. 21 building condition survey, which is the next five year cycle. So, we've started to put together really a uh, list of uh, items that need to have at least be looked at and may need some attention in the next several years. Uh, Craig's been instrumental. Um, we asked him what he was going to do when he, when he retired, if he hasn't already retired. He said he had plans. Um, he said, well, some of them might be coming back here to. So we can look at the scars in the front of back of your hands and you can show us all the skeletons in the closet that you know about that we might not know about. So we really started to develop this list and start to think about prioritization uh, of that list. If you read the memo, which was a very quick summary of what has happened to date, one of the other things that Matt's been helping with in your fiscal advisors is start starting to look at how are we going to accomplish this project at the least cost to the Hamilton community because that's critical. Um, not going to say it's no cost, but at minimal cost. I'm trying to use state aid, which you can argue is is all of our money that we send to Albany and we need to get it back for Hamilton. So your fiscal advisor is working with Paul and, and uh, the team that's been working on it will try to make sure that we're maximizing the dollars that come back from the tax money that we've all in so that you can continue to the programs that I just heard about tonight, which are unbelievable. So really, um, a lot of the items are the infrastructure, technology, the lighting, the heating, the roofing, make sure we're not dripping, that you have a project where you do a leak stripping through the collecting <laughs> water, uh, count the drops, you know, maybe we have a half problem, <laughs> We already know, we have to it, we already do it. Do we have some of that? Oh, good. All right, good. It's, a, it's a great science job. It's a bridge it's just a project. science project. Yeah. Biology. We really need to continue to maintain the facilities. And I think uh, where Matt is going is what a lot of our clients are doing in this market is getting on a regular cycle so that it's like your house. You have to do. You have to paint it. You may have to put a roof on it. But at least you have to plan how you're going to take care of it for the next generation or generations of kids that are coming through through this uh, 
this is an asset that, that the community's owned, the community paid for, and it needs to be maintained so you can continue to run the wonderful program. So unless you have questions, that's really our report. Uh, looking forward to coming and watch the kids uh, learn sketch up. Most of the time when we do that program with many kids, they blow you away in terms of what they can do with the software. It doesn't matter what software it is. We did it with some middle school students at ESM two years ago. And they gave them an assessment after a one hour lesson. They, they were trying to figure out which kids were going to be the engineers on the next project based learning, inquiry based learning. They all, 75% of the kids passed the assessment with flying colors and they were the educators for all the way trying to figure out how, which ones are going to be the engineers. They were all engineers, so for architects. And what they did when it was done in the use of that software was amazing. They, they did three dimensional models of various energy production equipment, nuclear, wind, uh, solar panels, coal burning steam plants, geothermal, et cetera, et cetera, in sketch. So it was awesome. So unless there's questions, what's that? Yeah, I just want to comment on a couple of things. We could be looking up to $30 million. Yeah, it's a, it's is what a, we're talking about. Question. And Matt can speak to if you have any questions about how you proceed to do this so the community that we really have to can afford that. I, yeah, it, it, one it of the is not a no yeah. It's a big number, it could be a big number. Yeah, right. it could be up to there. We're still trying to minimize the impact and figure out how to plan that out. And that, that's our yeah. Yeah. One, yeah. one of the things we look at first is our existing debt schedules. And you know, think of it as your mortgage at home or think of it as a car payment. You know, if you have a, if you finance your a car purchase over five years, buying a new car at the end of those five years to maintain steady payments. Really, same thing conceptually. So um, we do have some expiring debt um, that's coming off the books in a few years. So if we can, and, and really, where we rely heavily on these folks and, and SED, you sort of have to work backwards because everything starts with the vote. And before the vote, everything with SED starts with that vote. But prior to the vote, Obviously, we have to have all the work of these folks. We have committees. We have to prioritize. So the financial piece, you kind of figure out a general sense, and then you have to work backwards. Um, we're also in very early stages, but number one, first and foremost, is tying things in with expired debt service. The second thing is to complete things in phases um, based on priority. Um, first and foremost, um, and these, things, these guys will tell you everything is, is, is health and safety is number one. Um, but there are, are some major infrastructure issues with this building, number one being the roof. Um, you know, in the 2010 building condition survey when the roof was um, 20 years old, we were okay. Um, now the roof's 28 years old. Um, and that's, you know, it's quickly approaching the end of its useful life. So. Um, our HVAC systems, and we, we essentially have three different heating systems within this building based depending on the wings. Um, so Craig has identified that as a major, major priority. Um, I'm trying to remove as much of the steam. Right, heat to, heat to come up with more, and you know, I'll probably see some heads nodding and some thumbs up, but yes, uh, temperature control in the building. It, when you have three different systems, when you have such a large building, you have different size rooms, it's a, it's a challenge. So, um, you know, we'll, we will probably be looking at different phases. Um, phase one being the more dire need of, of infrastructure, and we'll try to tie that into expiring debt. And then there may be one or two more phases beyond that. So, um, you know, we've had internal conversations. Pete and I felt that it was important for Paul and Jim to be here. Uh, for the board to 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 hear this, for the community, I, I, I'm very I'm very glad that we have a lot of our own here, our, our faculty and staff here to hear this, um, because it is it is a is a, a big undertaking. But I think, regardless of where we go, what the future looks like here, there are things that need to be done. So, uh, and I guess our, you know we go then through the next steps administratively, go to the board for the approvals necessary, go to vote, and, and you know, and, and, I'll correct me if I'm wrong, but like if we voted June 1st, we probably wouldn't have anything started until December of 19. It's just a very long process to stay there, so we're feeling it.
an importance uh, to this and somewhat of an urgency. And, and, and I, I hate to, to bring this up and really throw shade at any other school district, but anybody around here that's been following out of Syracuse, there's one particular school district that was faced with some serious penalties and lack of funding um, based on some procedural things. So, you know, it's, we rely heavily on our architects, fiscal advisors, um, and contacts at SED to make sure we get things done. Right. And if I have 30 seconds, I have one plug that's unrelated to anything except what you all did. July 25th and 26th, Collaborative Educators Summit. ESM High School, sponsored by King and King Siemens for our law firm. It's free. All you have to do is get there. I'll send it. I'll send a note. Uh, I'll send it again. Sure. I'll, I'll send a note to you. And if anybody's interested, we like to have teams of people there. So people that you're all working together on a lot of collaborative pro projects. I went last year with Oneida High School. Yes. And it was amazing. Yeah. So. And we'll Really um, the keynote speaker this year, sorry to be to take more time. No. The keynote speaker is uh, Tony Collins, president of Clarkson University. And he's going to be talking about the title of it is Educating the Unknown, because none of us know what the future is right now. We're preparing kids for that. So it's a day and a half, two days, come to our office for adult beverages and food on uh, Twenty-fifth, which is continuing networking opportunity to see out here. You'll meet a lot of educators that are doing the kinds of things you're doing uh, all over the state. So. Meg just signed up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Can I leave the team? It's it's not not that's all I needed. Uh, so we usually had, I think last year, I don't know, probably three hundred uh, educators here, all from the Central New York, New York country. I'll call it Central New York, you know, Watertown, or Palmyra, East West. Inspiring and very beneficial. Something you can take right back to the classroom. Yeah, that, the intent is do something different in September. And you, you make some connections with some other great people, so you're welcome. Thank you. 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 helps to fund and what people do with their, with their grants. So it's exciting, so thank you. All right, we're going to move into the consent agenda, and we're going to do one motion to approve items 3.1 through 3.6, and then I will read the other ones. Um, I need a motion to approve the uh, treasurer's report, the financial report, the consideration of claims, the transportation report, the cafeteria report, um, the transfer of funds and the transfer of funds. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to authorize the superintendent to pay claims during the period 6 to 6 Second. Discussion? Did you get that? Yeah, you're taking them out of the consent agenda. They're all consent agenda. Items. Right. I don't have to read the bus bond though. Yeah. You can read them, but they're all as one motion. So I don't have to read the read them individually. I do. You do, but it's all one motion, like. Oh, okay. So. So strike that. So yeah. yeah. So strike that. So we have the first motion. So I'm reading them. This is still the first. This is the first still the first motion. Yeah. Boy, I'm messing this up on my last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Extra. I need extra. This is the uh, bus bond motion to adopt the res bond resolution of the Hamilton Central School District authorizing the issuance of bonds and other obligations for the purchase of two new school buses at a maximum cost of $180,000. The payment of such amount by the levy of a tax which may be collected in annual installments and in the anticipation of such tax, the issuance of bond and bond anticipation notes in the principal amount not to exceed $180,000 and the levy of a tax to pay the interest on said obligations under the local finance law. The period of probable usefulness of the bus is five years. 
Such a resolution shall be kept available for public inspection in the district offices during regular business hours for 20 days following publication. And a motion to enter into an intermunicipal agreement with Madison Oneida, Oneida Boses for the 2018-19 school year. So we have a motion on the table and a second discussion. Yeah, or you get to go into your old business too. Yeah. yeah. It's still consent. Okay. Um, motion to approve the Envision Math 2.0 Common Core Grades 6, 7, and 8 textbooks as recommended by the secondary principal and superintendent. And a motion to approve the appointment of the following extracurricular activities for the 17, 18, for the 18, 19 school year, or is it 17, 18, is that correct? It is 17, 18. Okay. Yeah. As recommended by the principals and superintendent, Susie Peach yearbook, Ryan Bain art club, Elizabeth Merrill yearbook, Elizabeth Merrill kickball. That's the consent agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read that one out loud? Does it need to be read out loud? I did. I read it. I read it. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I, I just have um, the bus bond has already been approved. Is that correct? Or that was the. You, um, at the election, they did the, the bus vote. proposition. Now, for the bus proposition, we actually have to do the paperwork. Okay, so, the so I just wanted to clarify, at mm -hmm. least for myself, that, that the voters have already approved this. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. This is just the allocation of the funding and then mm -hmm. sign off on the bond. Right. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. to the uh, first uh, opportunity for uh, participation by the general public. Hello, uh, my name is Jennifer Jones. Um, I just wanted to speak on behalf of the Summer Academy program. Um, I was just actually informed as I wrote tonight that that program is not going to be taking place this year. Um, and I just want to speak from personal experience. My son attended last year, um, was very unhappy that you know, he was going to have to attend summer school and this was going to be terrible and he loved every minute of it and did not want the program to end. Um, he learned so much. He He's always been a struggle with social studies and global studies and you know I had a history professor at Colgate come up and say that he was an um, he was a great historian and he you know she really saw history in his future uh, which was very shocking to me but um, I really think that the hands-on aspect of that program was amazing and I think it really carried through um, into his freshman year to to give him a lot of learning techniques and it was a great example of what hands-on and project-based learning can do. So I don't know if it's too late, but it would be great for that program to come back for, for other future kids in middle school. Thank you. Um, we have new business. <clears throat> I need a motion to accept the resignation of Eugene Gonzalez for retirement purposes as a full-time bus driver effective June 21st, 2018 with sincere appreciation for his services rendered to the district. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to accept the resignation of Jeffrey Morton as Director of Pupil Personnel Services effective July 6th, 2018 with sincere appreciation for his services rendered to the district. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to accept the resignation of Jessica Barnum as school counselor effective June 30th, 2018, with sincere appreciation for her services rendered to the district. So moved. Any discussion? She's been a pleasure to work with. I'm going to miss her a lot. Absolutely. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to accept the resignation of Amanda Sunderman as an elementary teacher, effective June 30th, 2018, with sincere appreciation for her services rendered to the district. So moved. 
Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the following fall coaches as recommended by the interim athletic director and superintendent. All right. Do we have any? Yeah, were they on that? No. no. Sorry. That's okay. They are attached. Oh, they're not listed on your agenda. They're not on your agenda, but they're attached. Oh, they're attached. Okay. There's an attachment. Yes, I'm going to read it. Yes, I'm going to read it. Thanks. Paper copy. For fall 2018-19, boys soccer varsity coach Brian Rose, JV coach Devin Coleman, and modified coach Mark Arquette. Soccer. Um, modified girls, Emily Free, Volleyball, Varsity Coach Lauren Hyman, and JV Coach Jennifer Brooks. Cross Country, Varsity Modified Coach, Victoria Seeger. Um, and then, uh, a mo I guess part of this motion is to approve um, Mike Batson of Waterville to coach Hamilton Varsity Football players, and Dwayne LeBlanc, Le LeBlanc, excuse me, um, of Morris Deleton to coach Hamilton's Far City soccer girls. Okay. Any further discussion? I guess, well, can I just, um, so the girls soccer has been a discussion for years about whether it would be able to move back at some point. I know the girls who have been playing in Morrisville have been very happy. Um, but just where do we stand on that? We have six girls that are interested in playing varsity soccer, um, which will be going to Morrisville. And our modified soccer signups are 21, which includes um, two ninth graders, nine eighth graders, and 10 seventh graders. Okay. So, yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the following elected or appointed official work days as recommended by the superintendent, the confidential secretary, the tax collector, the district clerk, and the district treasurer. Um, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to appoint Beverly Jones as part-time summer cleaner effective June 25th, 2000, 2018 through August 24th, 2018. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to approve the following staff for the 2018 summer program as recommended by the elementary principal, director of PPS, and superintendent. Bus aides, Laura Russin and Amanda Cover. Teachers, Jessica Poyer, Daniel Wayman, Renee Merck, sorry, Nicole Polakowski, Capri Tribisano. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to approve Stephen Cornell as a substitute bus driver as recommended by the head bus driver and superintendent. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve a leave of absence for Carrie King for child rearing purposes with tentative dates of September 4th through November 30th. 2018 is recommended by the sec secondary principal and superintendent. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve a leave of absence for Nicole Polakowski for child rearing purposes with tentative dates of September 24th through November 21st, 2018, <coughs> as recommended by the elementary principal and superintendent. Second. All in favor? I need a motion to approve the recommendations of the CSC and or CPSE, and any discussions like uh, that need to come from this will come in an executive session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to lease one school bus to the Village of Recreation Commission for the summer <coughs> 18 program with the following stipulations. Vehicle will be fully insured under the Village of Hamilton insurance policy with collision, comprehensive fire, etc. All gas oil will be provided by the village of Hamilton. And as approved, the active school bus driver presently on the HCS roster, if available, be used to drive the vehicle as required. So moved. Second. Thank Any you. Discussion? Yeah, I, 
Oh. It's a big help to the summer program. My, my kids are in it, and it's helpful to get them around. So this is great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to approve the class certification list for graduation, mm -hmm. contingent on each member completing all graduation requirements. Second. Any discussion? Just, do, we, do we know what the percentage of graduates were this year? Like from the beginning of? Cohort from ninth yeah. grade on? No, but I can get that for you. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I need a motion to accept returning non-resident students for the 2018-19 school year as per the non-resident policy as recommended by the principals and superintendent. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, this is a discussion with a potential re recommended action. Um, we're going to discuss the 2018-19 non-resident tuition rates. Currently the rates are as follows, 3,597 uh, for previously grandfathered in students and siblings, and um, that's a 3% increase. And then um, moving to 5,665 dollars for all other applicants, again, a 3% increase. So I'm just going to open the floor up to discussion. I guess the first question is what, what motivates the change? It's, it's consistent with the tax levy increase. So that's what it's based on is the tax levy? That's what it's been historically. Okay. Is there further discussion? We can move to potential action, or this could be tabled, but. Okay. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to approve the New York City art trip from October 5th and 6th as recommended by the secondary principal and superintendent contingent on meeting all planning requirements of the administration. Please remember that the Board of Education reserves the right to cancel the trip if circumstances should arise concerning the safety of the students. Second. Any discussion? I want to go. <laughs> Just put in a plug. What? Well, yeah. well okay. Studio, Art 3, and then we'll put up Studio 2 together. Down the line. All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to approve the summer curriculum proposals as recommended by the principals and superintendent. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Well, I, I, oh, I just have one question. I mean, we, we had a um, comment brought up earlier about a change in what the summer program is. I don't know if this is the right place for that or not, but if there is some explanation on the change of that summer program. It's different than this the summer program. Yeah. Okay. So the, the curriculum development proposals are people planning their next okay. year. Correct. Right. All these okay. presentations we've had all year long of, of what people do, that's what this is. That's right. Got it. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we keep hearing summer too, so, right? Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, um, I passed around a textbook. I need a motion to approve the addition of psychology course in the secondary program as an elective for the 2018 19 school year as recommended by the secondary principal and superintendent. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Um, yes. Okay. We can skip 10 because we just approved the textbook. Oh, no, we didn't approve no. the textbook. Sorry. Um, okay, so this now we go to a recommended action. No, first reading. This is the first reading? Okay, thank you. Oh, so we added the course, now we have to Yeah, the exactly. <laughs> if yeah. the psychology course is approved, which it was, 
The following textbook is Recommended Psychology in Everyday Life, fourth edition, with the authors of David G. Myers and C. Nathan DeWall. That's the first reading. We don't need a motion on that. I need a motion to approve Hamilton's participation in the following combined sports programs as recommended by the interim athletic director and superintendent for the 2018-19 school year. Girls varsity soccer with Marsville Eaton. Modified field hockey with Marsville Eaton. Boys varsity, JV, and modified football with Waterville. One second. Discussion? I would just ask that next time we do this, it should be closer to the the one that we approved the coaches. This was a couple steps later. Like, we've already approved the coaching for these. Oh, you so just move the agenda? Yeah, move the agenda, okay. because if, if we had questions or concerned about this, we've already approved those coaches, so just a little technical. Okay. Well. Noted. And the, the only other question is, do we have any um, ethics coming to us this year? We do not. Trade deficit happens. We do. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to donate at least 12 boxes of books to the Hamilton Public Library Summer Book Sale as recommended by the business manager and superintendent. So moved. Second. Discussion? What books? What types of books? These, are, these are, are old reading books from our library that Amy Jerome has. has determined to be excess. And, and unfortunately, we, we typically have a hard time getting rid of books. Mm -hmm. So this is actually good that uh, we found a means to get rid of some of them without just throwing them away. So. Okay, thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is a discussion item. Um, discuss search, update, and selection process. Upcoming board workshop with Jackie Starks. Um, Selected or um, scheduled for July 9th after the regular meeting. Do we have that meeting yet? Seven. Okay. Her, her portion is seven. Yes. Her yes. workshop. Okay. So her workshop. And that will get listed on the website. Yes. Okay. Anyone need yeah, anything to discuss? Or? And that meeting starts at six. Meeting starts at six with your reorg. New York takes about 10 minutes to go directly to regular. Be done hopefully by 7. Start your workshop with Jackie at 7. And is that a public workshop? It is. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's a public workshop with no, no, um, no public participation. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, administrator's reports. Bill? Sure. Um, since I submitted the report, we had uh, two really wonderful uh, opportunities to showcase our students. Monday night, we had the Section 3 Scholar Athlete Dinner at OCC. Mark Dunkel and Laura LaRuffo were recognized um, out of 172 scholar athletes in Section 3. And then last night at the uh, MBCC, we had the All Mohawk Valley All Star Banquet. Uh, there's over a thousand student athletes represented. We had seven students um, Aiden Woods, Aiden Helfont, Bryce Sharp Bollinger for tennis, Eric Geyer for soccer, Trevor Dow for basketball, Lauren Rodriguez for softball, and Sam Campbell for baseball recognized at that banquet. So, really impressive to have that many kids both evenings recognized um, at the section level in Mohawk Valley level. So, congratulations to them. Absolutely. Kevin? Uh, nothing new to report, just busy with uh, end of year festivities. Uh, or field day events and wellness day and that. But uh, if you have questions, you can sign up. Okay. Thank you. Um, I already talked about the Emerald Foundation grant, which was awesome. Um, just a smart bond update. So it looks like we're continuing to progress through the system. I'm not exactly sure what it means, but our status has been changed from initial review to program area review. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds promising. It's, 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 so, so they are looking at us, and uh, I'm uh, extremely hopeful that um, we're going to be approved in the fall, uh, if not sooner. Um, I was able to find a buyer for much of the excess equipment that um, you guys approved at a previous board meeting. 
uh, which was pretty exciting. They uh, sent all the boxes and all the packing material and they just wow. took it all away. So, <laughs> and they're going to give us some money for it, so it's great. Always <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, that's about it. So I think we had asked last time about the smart bonds money. We have to spend the money before we can apply to be reimbursed for it, yes? Uh, right. Okay. And I, but I also looked into the question about whether or not I can start the application for the second part of the money, and I can. Um, Even for, though we haven't spent it yet? Right, I'll just hold off on submitting it, okay. um, so I'll Got have it. it all ready for when it goes. Okay. Um, right now, I'm currently working on um, the, uh, I have to submit um, a technology plan to the state. It's due in October. But the first deadline to be submitted to the RIC is July 1st. So when that's complete, then I'll start the second half of the smart, the smart bot. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Oh, yeah. my turn. Your turn. <laughs> Hi. The end of the year uh, activities have just been phenomenal. Uh, Monday night, I went to see two of our students at their completion ceremony at the BOCES. That was really nice. Matt went uh, last night and saw two of our students, and Chris pitched in for us because Bill and I were conflicted on Tuesday and saw one of our students. So five of our students from the BOCES. The FFA banquet last night was um, outstanding. Uh, the cafeteria was packed. 150 people, the food was fantastic. The kids were great and ran the whole thing, right, Joanna? Mm -hmm. And uh, Joanna did a great job in recognizing the officers, and uh, it's really nice. What else I missed? Student awards, uh, you know, whether the athletic awards or the you know, recognizing the ninth through the 12th graders, just, uh, just grade school graduation. Which was oh, the great school, great preschool, preschool, absolutely adorable. And kindergarten today were absolutely adorable. <coughs> so thanks to all the hard work of our teachers and our staff, our community members, it's just. A, I, I know I gush and, 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 and you know, it, it, it's really heartfelt as to what I've been able to see for three and a half months already, holy cow. But certainly the last two or three weeks, just the pride in our community. So I have, unless you have any questions of me, I, what I should be talking about, I don't know. Uh, Go ahead again. Pete can't be at all places at all times. Um, last Friday was the uh, Jazz Cafe, and the Jazz Cafe, like the FFA, can, uh, can, um, Banquet last night was amazing. Uh, the the jazz the jazz group, the orchestra, some hysterical small combos, um, and terrific dessert. So, one more thing on the plate of what our community does and what our students do. And Cinderella tomorrow in French. And I'm so looking forward to being here for that. It just it just it just keeps giving. I was invited and I wrote back in French, and goodness only know what Sue's going to think of my French. <laughs> she said, I understand you dabble in French, so I did something. Yeah. <laughs> I did something. I something that resembled French. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what kind of grade I got and what I'm using. But I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, how do you say, French syndrome? <laughs> Item 7.3, the budget vote analysis. That's just informational. Okay, thank you. Um, 2018 senior class future plans, those were listed. Yep. And then. That's another document. What's that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and just, uh, just to put it out there, the, um, currently the second Thursday of each month is the board meetings. Uh, the new board will be needed, needing to set or not uh, a new date. Um, July 9th is a reorg and regular meeting along with um, the public workshop from Jackie Starks. August 3rd, um, we're hoping to have the final equalization rates. Uh, November is the tax collector's report due by the 15th. 
And then um, April 23rd, which is a hard date, uh, we do the BOCES administrative budget vote. And May 21st already would be the budget vote in school elections. Um, 7.6, I believe, is information yep. on uh, payroll. And to let everyone know, the office summer, summer hours, which will begin when, Debbie? Uh, the 1st of July, July 2nd. Okay. So July 2nd, yep, um, is a four day a week, and it's 32 hours, one, one office will be opened every Friday. Okay, and now we post it on the doors. Yeah, right, it is posted on the doors. It'll be on the website, Chris. Sure. Perfect. It'll be on the website. Thank you. And uh, finally, we have our last opportunity for community participation. I need a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss matters regarding particular individuals. Again, no intention to pass anything after the executive session. It's information for the board. Thank you. So, you're welcome to stay. I need the motions. Oh, no second. All in favor? Aye. 745.